Clearest day so far. That's what happens when it's cloudy for months on end. Hey everyone, John here from Learn to Stargaze, and in this video, we are going to create the smallest travel deep sky imaging rig that we can possibly uh, set up, including this, uh, the 2600 MC Duo. And another thing about this video, no script. No script this time, I'm just gonna be winging it. I'm gonna be winging this setup and trying to kill multiple birds with one stone here. So you probably realize that I haven't been posting many videos to YouTube recently. And the reason is, uh, I'm just doing a lot of things at once. And so we just finished up grad school, uh, at least the capstone of my grad, grad school project at Johns Hopkins. We've also got publishing deadlines with Sourcebooks. So we're doing a binocular book with Sourcebooks. And that's where this camera comes in. So I realized I had taken all the pictures uh, for the binocular book with my other camera, the 294 MC Pro. And then I started taking photos with the, the new camera, the 2600. And I realized that for publishing a book, the, the quality difference is quite significant so much so that I think I'm gonna retake most of the pictures for the book. But here's the thing, the deadline for the book is about a month away, so I have to act fast. And if you look at our forecast, uh, springtime in Canada, there's just not that many clear nights. So we're in a little bit of a squeeze, but I've been invited to the Analog Astronaut Conference just south of Phoenix, Arizona again this year. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put this camera in my carry-on again. And so we did this a few years ago. I took a similar setup uh, with, with a larger telescope, uh, except it was heavy and was sort of a pain. Yeah, I have some ideas on how we're gonna shrink this. This current setup is a bit janky. We've got actually two ASI Airs tied together here. The other thing is I need to find my shorter USB cord. This is a, this is a cable management nightmare here. And I'm gonna see if we can do away with one of the counterweights. So the C-Star, it's not quite the quality needed to make books. because I also need a very wide field of view because again, I'm simulating binoculars. We might be able to find a way to leverage this tripod with this telescope. And then this can easily fit in my carry-on. So that's the plan. A um, couple things we need to do. I'm gonna borrow the finder scope connection here and see if I can get that to hook on to the, the ASI Air Mini. So this should just snap back on right here. Okay, so let's check our counterweight situation. 90 minus 30 is about 60, so when I'm down south, it's gonna be about here, so let's check the balance. Okay, I'm gonna commit the mortal sin of telescope setup. I'm gonna lock this in place, but I'm gonna take these counterweights off altogether and see which one I need to bring. Oh, I think we'll be fine with that, look at that. This counterweight stays home. Now the question, can we connect this uh, AZ GTI with the Skywatcher wedge to the C-Star tripod? There we go. Wow, it looks like that's a match. There we go, now the question is, do I trust it? Oh, gross. Stella just ate some of the kid's Lego there. So that, Looks pretty stable. Let's see here. Not gonna fall over. I think this will work. This bolt. So the bolt that holds the AZ GTI onto the Skywatcher wedge, yeah, it had to be replaced because the wedge had a knob here before that was so big it ran into the mount. So so this had to be replaced. And I just replaced it with the one I had around the house, which is so long that there's a risk that the telescope will run into it. At least the axis here, and I'm gonna. See, because otherwise we'll need to run to the hardware store. It clears. Oh, cord and SD card. We'll also need to bring a flat panel with us as well. Otherwise, we have some pretty funky pictures. All right, so we've got our smaller USB cord. I actually put a longer power cord on the connection between the ASI Air and the mount because I snagged that last time. To run our flats panel, we're gonna run that USB uh, off the ASI Air, I realize you can do that. Okay, besides that, I think we are ready to test it. So let's add some power and going into the ASI Air app. <laughs> so one of the embarrassing issues that I've run into is that the app will be set to 5G and then 
I don't realize that and then the mount will not connect no matter what. And I did my other trick of writing the sort of IP address and BOWD number, the, you know, under UVP 11880 on the mount because I always forget. And then I add it 2.4 gigahertz just to remind me so that I don't forget that again, you know. And if you want to switch that, you sort of have to go into the ASIA or click on, it doesn't even look like a button, device Wi-Fi and you switch it over uh, here. So if you're using any other mount, you know, 5G, this mount, 2.4. Here we go, we should be able to move the mount. All right, we have full control. Here's a quick rundown of just what we're including here. Again, I've got the ASI Air Mini. This is the ASI 2600MC Duo. So this is the color version. Um, in the mount, we've got the AZ GTI. You know, if we were to do this again today, we'd probably do the uh, Sky Adventurer uh, GTI, but this is what they had at the time. So we had to add the wedge. Uh, this is a counterweight uh, that I just ordered separately off Amazon, I believe. And this telescope is the uh, Askar FMA 180 Pro. And I think that what the Pro includes is just this, this dovetail. And so that is what we're including. I'm gonna remember to pack this little Batnoff mask that I 3D printed. And if you want any of the 3D print files, I typically post those to my Patreon. You can contact me on there if you would like a copy. So let's put this in the bag and see how much fits. This is going in my carry-on, so I'll have a close eye on this the whole time, making sure it doesn't drop or get bumped or anything. Okay, this can go in separate. Well, there you have it, it fits. The next day, my son Isaac and I boarded a plane at 5 a.m. to Phoenix, Arizona. From there, we drove down to Biosphere 2 for the annual Analog Astronaut Conference. Being at Biosphere is always an adventure. With rattlesnakes and some very cool people, there was never a dull moment. I gave a lightning talk about Stargaze Nova Scotia, an astronomy park we plan to build in eastern Canada, and Isaac was even able to try on a pressure suit in a gravity offset machine. And then with my son Isaac behind the camera, we continued filming this video. So we're here in the casitas at Biosphere 2, and we got the telescope out of our luggage. So the TSA did go through it pretty aggressively. They were like, where's the lens? And I was like, it's right here. And they're like, take that out. And so they went through it. So right now we're gonna, we're gonna put together and uh, make sure it still works. And then tonight, we've got clear skies here in Arizona. And so we are going to put it to the test and start taking some photos in dark skies. John, you mind if I help you out with that? You should, Jesse, come on. And we've got my man Jesse here, just Stay completed there. his application to become a NASA astronaut. Going on, which is guys. quite the process, and you are a fabulous entertainer as well. Hey, galactic mission. Someone said I'm tripping. Astronaut expedition. When yeah, do a little bit of music thing, a little bit of tech thing, and a little bit of space thing. Let me see something funny. So David Levy, famous astronomer, signs this. It's a comet. <laughs> it's a comet. Yeah, it's he's, a comet. He's a famous <laughs> comet hunter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hypothetically, this should come to life. You hear that? I hear it. If this were nighttime, we would pop off the lens here. That's the computer booting up. There's actually two cameras in here. There's one camera that's going to do three minute exposures to take photos of space. And there's a second camera that is going to take one second exposures and that'll do our guiding. But it looks like it's working. Oh man. Okay, so we're here at Biosphere 2. We're actually at an observatory, which I think you can see the dome here a little bit. If I run over here, you can't see it here, but there's about 10 roll-off roof observatories between here and here. And so, but just borrowing the driveway here and we've got the telescope going. Guiding is excellent, below one arc second. And you definitely cannot see it here, but the Northern Lights are visible all the way across the sky. And this is nuts, because we are in Southern Arizona, close to Mexico. This is wild. This was just an absolutely great place to observe the stars. As you'll see from some of the photos, we had an amazing view of the Northern Lights. 
It's too bad I didn't bring my Ragged-O DSLR. And as I said earlier, the reason we brought this telescope to Arizona is that we're doing a book about binocular stargazing. And so all the photos I took with this were designed to show you what the view of the sky looks like through binoculars. I actually had binoculars out here as well. One of the hilarious challenges that we had is because the northern lights were so bright, some of the nebulas did not even show up in the telescope. So this system worked flawlessly. My tracking was generally under an arc second with no guiding issues. And it was really just a lot of fun to be able to bring this on the plane without having to check the tripod separately. That was really cool. Well, I hope you enjoy this video on this really fun travel setup for astrophotography. Subscribe to Learn to Stargaze so you don't miss the next video. Be sure to follow us on Patreon. And remember, the future is looking up.